Welcome to the WSL Post Show. An intense day here, an intense Monday at the Western Australia Margaret River Pro. Plenty to break down as we got through the opening round for the men and through those dreaded two elimination round heats for the women. Ronnie Blakey joined here on set with Richie Lovett, Felicity Palmatier. Uh, Rich, beautiful morning once again uh, and clean conditions to kick things off for the opening round for the men. Yeah, super contestable waves and it actually started to light up and the other thing that lit up with the surfers, scores just dropping out of the air, you know, eights and nines. So it was an incredible day of competition. Everyone was fired up. Yeah, we saw some great performances, uh, but Felicity, the, the energy changed a bit once we moved into the uh, elimination round for the women. Oh, completely. I feel like the energy shifted this morning. I was down in the athlete zone and there wasn't too many smiles appearing on people's faces. I was like, oh, I'm getting out of here. But yeah, the wave showed up throughout the day and it was consistent and we saw some great scores go down. Yeah, the conditions kind of held strong, didn't they? It was nice and clean in the morning, uh, offshore breeze. Once the, the wind kind of swung around a bit and it got a little bit of uh, texture on that surface, the energy came up a lot. So we saw plenty of waves ridden. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the swell really started to fill in, which was on the charts. We knew it was going to. Um, but, yeah, the, the performances kept lifting. Our surfers adapted. The wind did a full 180 on us. Uh, and I think that was eventually why we ended up calling it off because the wind just got a little bit too strong, started breaking the waves up too much. Yeah, it did. Uh, we saw some clutch performers by surfers uh, below the cut line looking for big finishes here at stop number five. Stace, the man you're about to speak to, was really strong this afternoon. Yeah, Ronnie, he was strong this afternoon and strong this morning. Cal, how do you reset after losing such a great scoring heat in round one? Yeah, well, I think for me, I'm just happy to start um, putting some heats together and um, and just put a performance together. So for me, I, didn't, I wasn't so bummed this morning. I was more just like pumped and um, started to kind of just build momentum and I knew I was going to be the waves are still going to be fun this afternoon, so, um, yeah, I didn't take it too hard at all. Yeah, it certainly showed then. You looked relaxed and got the job done. Good time to get a win in the elimination round. Yeah, for sure. That round sucks, and I found myself in it a bit this year, so it feels nice to get in front of the glass and finally get a win. Um, it's been a bit of a tough year, but it's just one, one heat at a time and just keep marching forward. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Thanks for your time, and uh, best of luck tomorrow. Thank you, Stace. Yeah, Callum Robson, you heard him uh, say it. <laughs> the elimination round <laughs> sucks. He doesn't want to be there. He was being kind. Has, has found himself there, though, uh, a few times yeah. this, this year, Rich. Uh, surprised to see him sitting there where he is on the rankings at the moment, just being so consistent. In, in the past couple of seasons. Look, you look at his surfing and you go, there's no way he should be down there. And uh, this is what happens when you get on the tour. You can sometimes get in these little ruts where you are getting good point scores. You are dropping big heat totals, but you're just not getting through heat. So uh, maybe this is the start of a new rhythm. Yeah, for 14 points plus in uh, a heat that sent him to the elimination round. So uh, there was a lot of good numbers falling today. And we uh, were able to call some, some exceptional performances and see people, I, I think... Just showing what they're capable of with their, their back against the wall. It felt like at Bell's Felicity, there were still some people kind of thinking, well, I've got a chance to alleviate some pressure, but they still hadn't kind of stepped up to do their best surfing. Yeah, definitely. I think today, well and truly on the women's side, we definitely saw, I mean, Sally comes to mind, big one. I mean, she needed to get through that heat to keep this dream alive. India Robinson, Lulu, she still can keep this dream alive, but it's sort of up to a few other people now. But, yeah, we saw people rise to the occasion. And, uh, yeah, Sally, for me, was a standout. Let's have a look at that heat. Sally Fitzgibbons, you know, has been such a strong competitor, Rich, for such a long period of time now. So many event victories, 12 in total, four ISA gold medals. And she finds herself up against it coming into stop number five. And she had a really tough draw, too. Yeah, she did. Joanne DeFay, she's just been in such good form. Uh, the last couple of events, you know, she's had a win. She's been making finals consistently. Uh, and Sally, in contrast, has been a little inconsistent, been finding it hard to get a rhythm. But that turn there was just amazing. Oh, my gosh. That was so critical, the way she held on to that. And that is really when you see Sally Fitzgibbons rise to the occasion. When she's under pressure, she just gets the job done. Yeah, it was so incredible to see, and we heard it in her post-heat interview. She was just like, oh, her post-heat debrief with her dad, she was like, oh, it just felt so good to finally get a bit of rhythm, a bit of momentum, get that adrenaline going in the heat, and, and stick a couple of turns that she's been working so hard on like that. 817 for that single manoeuvre. So sick to see. Stoked for Sal. Big moment today for Sally Fitzgibbons, and 
You know, she, she's worked on that progressive approach, Rich, but that, that was truly unpredictable from her. I, I just didn't see it coming. It was awesome. Yeah, I just had this feeling that she was going to get the win here uh, before this heat, and a tough heat against the local, uh, you know, Bronte McCauley, who knows this break better than anyone, and obviously uh, an informed Joanne DeFay, but Sally, she's just risen to the occasion. This could be the start of the role that we've been waiting for. Yeah, it's, it's going to have to be a good one. Sal's got to make up some serious ground, but uh, yeah. That was a step in the, the right direction, for sure. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I did too. And I, I, I liked, she was very uh, active in that heat. It took her a while. I think she called it like 11 or 12 ways. But yeah, that momentum just kept building on every score. And eventually things just started to click. She found those cleaner faced waves. And yeah, we saw some amazing momentum. Let's see if she can keep it going. As good as that heat was, it wasn't our best mobile heat of the day. That belonged to Ethan Ewing. Uh, he achieved excellence. Uh, as did Cade Matson. Reef Hazel Hazelwood also out in the lineup for this one, Rich, but Ethan just looking deadly. Oh, this was when the swell just started to fill in. Ethan Ewing getting a couple of these smooth right handers and just a power display beyond belief, really. This guy is on some sort of roll at the moment, just the power surfing. Uh, he's really starting to get into that John John conversation of power surfers out at Margaret River. Cade Matson, he picked up a couple of good waves too, had a board change. Uh, creased his favourite board and came in and got the Sperry and picked it up well. Wow. I mean, give Ethan Ewing a clean face wave and oh. watch the damage be done. It's just so beautiful to watch the limited transition between turns two. It's just silky smooth surfing. Just got to echo what you said, Rich. I feel like he is in that conversation now with John when you talk about waves like Margaret River. It's just that surfing was incredible. Obviously working with Jake, Cade was too. So really uh, good day in the office for old uh, Jake and Snake. Old serpent. <laughs> Scaly old <laughs> devil. <laughs> uh, he did well. And, and both Cade and Ethan. Exceptional performances. Reef Hazelwood was did pretty good too. He was this close, Rich. Just a... Yeah, a really a, a hair and completing a, a big rotation yep. on the left as well that would have got him right in the mix and maybe threatened the second spot. But uh, I absolutely love that. Really fun to watch. And I uh, can't wait to see more from Ethan here. And, uh, yeah, just as he continues this magic run of form. Uh, you know, Bells was a funny one for him yeah. because uh, we've seen him down there before where he's on this magic run form-wise and then just got wave staffed in that event. And uh, it was a... Uh, kind of a bummer to see him not get that opportunity to go back to back down there. Yeah, it was a shame, but, you know, it's a new event here and away we go again, you know. But it, he really is, for me, probably the most efficient surfer on the tour at the moment in terms of just his technique, power output. Um, he, he's just so pretty to watch as well. I think if you asked majority of the surfers on tour, they'd say he'd be one of the favourites in terms of style and finesse. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of his to lose almost. Yeah. They had, they had the the run of it, the cleaner conditions yep. too, those surfing. So it did kind of lend itself to his uh, his beautiful clean rail surfing. And uh, we'll see if he can deal with main break and everything it dishes up throughout the uh, the rest of this window. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how we slice it and dice it for the rest of the week, I think. But maybe a little bit more opportunity tomorrow, I think. And clean conditions in the morning, similar to today. But... Uh, Look, Margaret River region always delivers. The back end of the waiting period is looking pretty promising too. Let's have a look at the surf line forecast and find out what's coming our way to Moz and also through the rest of the event window here, Rich. Sure. Well, we've uh, this new clean swell that turned up this morning. It's built all through the day. Uh, and we knew it was going to uh, build overnight. It's going to keep building into tomorrow and then it'll start to taper off. Uh, through Friday, you know, through Thursday, Friday. Uh, but then we have another swell that kind of clicks into gear uh, towards the weekend. So we've got options. Uh, I think tomorrow is probably looking like one of the better days. And uh, you can see here, here we go, Tuesday through to Friday, we've got consistent waves in the sort of five to seven foot faces. So good, you know, shoulder to head high conditions. We saw sets today that were kind of a couple of double overhead sets in terms of height. Uh, this wind, we're going to have to just uh, manage our way through that. It'll be offshore every morning and then it'll swing around like it did in the afternoon today. Sounds good. Happy with that? <laughs> yeah. A lot of positives to take from the uh, the Always. Surfline forecast. Enjoy that. Enjoyed that. And, and also, like we said before, enjoyed watching the world's best. The men uh, in particular get the, the best of the conditions properly in the opening round for them. Uh, big numbers dropped right across the board, even those surfers that were relegated to the elimination round. Yeah, I think today was uh, probably the 
collectively the best scoring day of surfing we've had on the tour this year when you sort of throw everything into a bucket and shake it around. It was, there was just good scores all day long, which was great to see. Um, a bunch of crew stepped up that needed to, which is great. I love seeing how competitors react under that pressure. Can't wait to do more of it tomorrow, actually. Let's pull the best moments out of that bucket right uh, now. Let's <laughs> get stuck into the bio, Glenn. Daily Dose, the top five moments from today, and we will kick things off with an absolute masterclass oh, yeah. from Gabriel Medina. His first wave in his defence of the title that he took out here last year was an 8.5. Oh. Yeah. Go, Flick. Take it away. Just beautiful textbook backhand surfing and come out of the gates absolutely firing. First two waves, yeah, 8.5 and but just so beautiful to watch his backhand. I also got to watch him in some of the free surfs and I was like, oh, he had a job ahead of him but he's looking so on point. He's looking on fire. Obviously, David Silva coming up against that fellow countryman there, but here we go. Impressive. <laughs> Coming in at number four, Italo Fajera. He was uh, very strong today. Two excellent numbers for him. He looks so focused and fired up heading out into the lineup. Two uh, pocket eight fives, four turns is all it took. Each wave had two solid hangers on it on the back end. You can see uh, Italo back in fine form. That energy that he normally competes with, uh, you could feel it again. He was super focused, but he sent in the postie that he was having a lot of fun and starting to feel it. India Robinson way down the back end of the rankings at the moment, coming into stop five. Needs a, a victory to get herself to the end, but she's got to surf at one heat at a time, and she was strong oh. in the opening round. Yeah, India In the elimination round, I should say. Super strong, really, really good surfing. This wave here, this was her 7.67, big carving manoeuvre. Timed this last belt really well. But in my eyes, I feel like she's got more in the tank. I feel like she's ready to drop an eight point right. This, this wave seems to suit her surfing and yeah, she's keeping her dream alive. She'll be building confidence for sure. This man, we already saw some highlights from his heat. Let's have a look at them again. An incredible two wave total of 17 points. Great pocket work, great rail work, Rich, uh, but it was the the opening move on the 9.5 that, that really stood out. Oh, it was just incredible. Perfect rail approach, just jams the pocket so hard. And uh, kids, if you want to emulate someone, have a look at this guy. Just try and do what he does. This is <laughs> just perfect surfing, really. Board just looks so magical underneath his feet. It was uh, pretty much in perfect control from start to finish. Cade Matson, he had a couple of great waves. But yeah, off uh, form today, he's the man to beat. Coming at number one, though, no surprises here. Sally Fitzgibbons, one of the veterans on the championship tour, fighting back with this. Yeah, major hack, super critical, really late. Man, and through those Eight one seven for that one turn. Really beautiful by Sal. And I mean, going into this heat on paper, I was a bit worried for Sal coming up against Bronte Wildcard Brisa, who's obviously really in form. But yeah, no match for Sal. Two eights and. Also keeping her dream alive, so really well done. Good to see smiles from Sal, and let's see if she can continue this momentum. Yeah, avoids that elimination round. There was uh, there was some pr surprises today. Surprising to see John John Florence in the elimination round, but just oh. saving himself in the elimination round to progress through to that that third round. You you just don't see him putting. You surely don't see him putting three back to back heats here. Uh, <laughs> together like that. He's going to click at some point, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's main break Margaret's. <laughs> I know. I, well, we're so used to seeing him dropping excellent rides every single time he stands up on the board that we're, we're just sort of a little put off by a bit of the disjointed nature of the first couple of heats he's had. So anyway, he'll click back into gear. Uh, perhaps if we get another smooth morning tomorrow morning, he'll be back out there and show us what he's really made of. Obviously, uh, Kelly Slatter always a big focus and particularly with where he's sitting uh, on the rankings at the moment. Felicity, what did you make of his performance today? Well, I saw a couple of moments of brilliance for sure. And I think... Look, it's not over yet. He's still, he's coming up. If, you know, if we continue with this elimination round, he could be first heat tomorrow morning. We'll see uh, how that fares for him. We know he might not like an early morning. <laughs> but yeah, it's not over yet. You better get used to them. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a lot of them coming up for Kelly, but he has been relegated to the elimination round and he's going to be in that, uh, it, it'll be second heat of the morning. He's in heat three at the moment. Cole Hausman, Yago Dora in that, that battle. Uh, that's a really tough draw. The elimination round heat had some real talent in it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a big one for sure. Um, uh, he's going to be up against the two powerful goofy footers. Uh, I thought the, equi the equipment choice was interesting today. The fin configuration, a little different to what everyone else did. 
you know, this is what he does. He keeps us guessing, and uh, let's see what he brings tomorrow. Can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, we will be down here nice and early, having a, a look at the, the conditions and first light, 7.15. We will make a call and uh, possibly get things underway at 7.30 a.m. Right now, though, it's time for more highlights. Hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll see you tomorrow. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.